Okay. We're we'll getting started, guys. So, exercise 9B, uh, we're talking about distributions of sample means. So, this is going to flow on from what we were talking about yesterday. Yesterday, we had the distribution SN, which was the distribution that arose when we add results together. Now, we're talking about the distribution XN, which is the distribution, which is the average of the sum of those distributions. So we've got, you know, we've got one observation plus another observation all the way up to n observations divided by how many observations we're doing is going to be the, uh, the um, xn distribution. Okay, so here we go. We've got bags of peanuts are known, uh, actually maybe we need to read the first few points because I want to, there's uh, one point I want to emphasize. The first box, I've just stated it up here. Um, now that's the second box. And then the first box is uh, this one here. Okay, but let's have a read of the next two points. The mean of the observations and the mean of the distribution may be different. Okay, all I'm saying there is, let's say we know the mean weight of eggs is 60 grams, all right? That doesn't mean if you weigh an egg that it is going to be 60 grams, does it? Okay, so the mean of observations may be different from the mean of the distribution. And when we know the mean of the distribution, it always takes precedence over the mean of the observations. So the mean of the distribution, if it's known, it trumps the mean of the observations. So that's what that um, second, the words are saying there. And then we've got, as the number of observations increases, the observed average is going to get closer and closer to the known mean. Okay. So here we have bags of peanuts, which are normally distributed. They have a mean of 765 grams and a standard deviation of eight grams. Now we're randomly checking six bags of peanuts and we found their weights were 761, 762, 762, 763, 764 and 765 respectively. So we weighed six bags and those were the weights. Okay, part A says, find the observed value of x6. So if we've got xn is the sum of n observations divided by n, here we've got x6 is going to be the sum of 6 observations divided by 6. So I'll just do that really quickly in my head. I reckon 762.83 would vary. Um, Okay, so that's our observed value of x6, all right? From, based off our observations, the mean is 762.83. Okay, part A, uh, sorry, part A, is, uh, part B it should read, find the mean and standard deviation of x6. Okay, so the mean of x6, is always equal to the mean of x, all right? If it's known, if it's known. So what's gonna, what takes precedence? The known mean, the known mean is 765. And so even though we calculated this value, the known mean is going to trump it when we state the mean of x6. All right, so that's one way we can denote it, the mean of subscript x6. Uh, and the standard deviation is this formula here. Standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So our standard deviation is 8. So the standard deviation of x6 is going to be 8 divided by the square root of n. How many observations have we performed? 6. And we can just leave it like that. Okay, so both 9a and 9b, they're not going to make much sense by themselves, but when we do 9c next week, that's when we're going to bring them together and we're sort of going to understand a bit more as to why we're doing it. Uh, but that's enough to do exercise 9b. Uh, I don't want to leap ahead to 9c because it is a pretty fat exercise. Um, so let's just do 9b, dedicate a bit of time to our folio today as well. Um, that's the plan. Cool.